Oops, let's lower that. Sorry for the delay. I just couldn't get going this morning. It's been crazy around here. We have gotten so much fabric in the last week. It's been chaos. I got another 50 bolts yesterday, including a bunch of wide backs and um, I got everything unboxed, but not all of it unpacked, like all the plastic or anything like that. So it's been crazy. It's like somebody pulled a switch and all of the manufacturers are shipping just crazy. I've received at least two surprise orders of things that I was not expecting. Um, and it's just a ton. I don't know what's going on, but they are just shipping everything and anything that they have on their books. It's crazy. But I know we've got two blocks today, which we are doing block 43 and 44. So let's get to it because I don't have a lot of time. Okay, let's do this. A lot of this is going to be repeat and repeat and more repeat. Because um, there's stuff that we've done number of times already. So we've got our flying geese and I left one. These three blocks here, what I did, remember I told you the extra blocks in the beginning, save them. These are just extra half square triangle blocks that I had from previous blocks. So right now we have half of our flying geese done. All we're gonna do is put a square on the other side and sew it right down the angle. Now you can draw a line from this corner to this corner and you sew right on that line, but having this grid glide makes things a little bit easier. And um, I will show you how to do it traditionally in the next block because I haven't done as much pre uh, piecing on that one. But all I'm doing is just going, oops, I made a mistake, hold on. Followed the wrong line. Give me a second. I have one quilt that's going on the long arm for a customer. And then I'm going to take the original quilt that I made for this class or this quilt along. And I am gonna start quilting it with rulers, with um, the computer, I'm gonna be doing it free motion, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and I'm hopefully gonna have recordings for everything. Not that I'm an expert, because by no means am I an expert when it comes to quilting. But, oh goodness gracious, this machine is deciding to not want to be nice. Um, I am not an expert and I won't claim to be, but it's fun. It's something that I enjoy. And if I can teach you something a little bit different, um, a little. A lot of what I've learned over the years, I've learned through trial and error. Um, just because I haven't had a lot of formal teaching. I got to remember, I mean, I've been quilting since I was 12. Back then, we didn't even have rotary cutters, okay? We literally had cardboard patterns that we would make. If you wanted a, a six inch square, you would create it on cardboard or something stiff like that. And that became your template for the rest of the quilt or for as long as you needed six inch blocks. So we would have, I had like literally tons of cardboard templates that I made that I just kept 
in a folder and you would literally trace them on the back of the fabric and use a scissor to cut them. That, that, that's how we did it. We didn't have everything that you know we have now. So I've quilted for a long time. I've learned a lot of things here and there, but it's not what I would call, um, it's called, it's called, I, I learned it myself. Some of it has been taught to me, but most of it I learned myself. So, and that goes for the big machines. I learn a lot of things through trial and error and playing and having fun. Okay, this block is now ready to sew together. Um, I am going to do it, this sewing these flangies together, then the half square triangles. But I think that is gonna be a lot of fun. And who knows, you may learn a little something. There are a lot of different ways to use your quilt machine, your long arm. And there's some that you may not have even thought of. And I just wanna have some fun. I'm also working on the newsletter. July is going to be a short month for me. If you haven't heard, I am actually taking some time off. So I will be closing the shop for a few days. I am going away around the third week of July for a few days. Uh, the shop will be closed on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and will reopen Friday and Saturday. So that week, I will not have any videos for our Make the Cut, but I'm in desperate need of a vacation. So I'm going away with some friends of mine, and we are going to just sit and sew, and I'm hoping to have some fun. I'm not teaching. Um, I'm just going to sew what I want. We'll see how well that goes. Okay, now we're just going to sew this one on. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Either way, I desperately, desperately need a vacation. I haven't had a real vacation in quite a while. Started getting my kits for quilters tracks from other stores this week. So far I've gotten three and I'm super excited about that. Yes, I know. Have I sewed many? No, but that's okay. I keep collecting them anyway, because I like it. Hopefully you guys are having fun with quilters track. Oh my goodness gracious. Almost done with this one and then we'll work on the next one. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I hope you're getting something out of this. It works for you. I know I have enjoyed putting this quilt together immensely. It's a great way to hone your skills. It really, really is. Okay, so let's. 
All right. So these two seams I've ironed this way, and these two seams I've ironed out. That's so that I can line the seams up and nest them. And I'll show you what I mean. Like I said, a lot of this is repeat, but by the end of this quilt, your um, your skills with aligning seams and doing a quarter inch seam allowance should be much better. Uh, hold on, because I think somebody came in. Nope, that must have been the mail. Okay, good. So, got the top seam going that way, the bottom seam going this way on both of these. And what that does is it creates a line that you can line up your seams. And as long as they're nice and flat, you know that the seams are lined up. Well, if you have too much of a bump, that means the seam is not lined up. And there we go. And they're lined up pretty well. I'm happy with them. All right, let's work on the next one. Just got to iron them and trim them up and it'll be fine. All right, this one I haven't done as much work on. I didn't want to wait too much longer. But here you go. Okay, we got more flying geese. So I'm going to do these a little bit more traditional for you so that you can see how this is done. Oh, somebody else. I'm gonna have to put you guys on hold just a second. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. <sighs> I have to keep the door open for um, the mailman when I'm back here. And unfortunately, people don't always look to see that the open sign is on or whatever, and they still walk in. So it's kind of a little crazy. All right, so back to traditional method. 
traditional method of doing a flying geese is you've got your rectangle and you have a square. Use of these two squares of the same fabric. We're gonna lay it on there. And we're gonna draw a line. And I usually start on the same side of the flying geese each time. Hopefully you can see that a little bit better now. Maybe just a tiny bit darker. And the only reason I start on the same side is if you're doing a quilt with a lot of flying geese, you run the risk of a little bit of seam that's created up here when the two triangles overlap of being different. If you don't start on the same side, they may or may not show up. And I've found in the long run, it's better if you're gonna do something where you have a lot of flying geese in the same quilt, it's better to have them all going the same way. Is it the end of the world if that doesn't happen? No. Um, you just gotta learn to pick your battles. It may or may not be noticeable. I'm not, you know, it's up to you. You are the final say in your quilts. Just a couple of more lines here. What else is going on? Um, let's see. Well, we've gotten a ton. I already told you a ton of fabric. Well, we've gotten nearly a minimum of a hundred bolts just in the last two shipments since Friday, I think. It's been kind of crazy. We got some gorgeous new wide backs. The colors are just my kind of colors, of course. They're really pretty teals and purples. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay. So now that you have all we're gonna do, and now we have the line, all we're gonna do is stitch on that line. I usually stitch just a thread width on the other side of the line, just so that I get a nice crisp fold. And do a little bit of chain piecing. Because my machine is not happy today. So we have half of our flying geese done. Oops. Okay. So all you have to do now is iron that half triangle over. And then we cut the bulk off. Now it's not absolutely mandatory to cut the extra corner off. Some people leave them. Personally, I don't like having that extra fabric in there. I have seen where sometimes uh, the layers move a little bit in opposites, and I don't like that extra bulk either. So I cut it off whenever possible. Okay, so all we're gonna do, and just use a scissor. I do, literally, unless you had like, I don't know, a ton of flying geese at one time, then you can, you know, if you felt comfortable, you could do the rotary cutter, but literally all I do is cut about a quarter of an inch from our stitch line. There you go. Let's see if I have 
close up, just a quarter of an inch from the stitch line. Uncap the bulk off, that's it. I don't draw a line, I don't use a ruler, just, there you go. Now, this one back, this one back, put that one back. Okay, so now we just have to do the other side of the half square triangle. Lay it down. There it is with the line. You can pin these if you feel more comfortable. I don't find it necessary, but I'm going to do a stitch just a width, a thread width on this side of the line so that when I iron it over, we've got a crisp, clean seam. Okay. I could not get myself moving today. Do you ever have those days? I don't know what it was, but I just could not get going today. Almost done with this week's blocks. Now, all I'm going to do is iron the triangle over and cut the excess. Oh, I know what I found out. My um, teaching kit for Kimberbell's Home Sweet Haunted Home has shipped. So that I'll have that this week and I'll get to play with um, getting those projects going so everybody can see them in person. Super excited about that because it's the newest Halloween event that um, Camberbell has come up with. There we go. All I have to do now is cut the excess off the new corner that we did. And Almost done sewing these blocks together. I'm sorry if we're getting a lot of repeats. Unfortunately, that's what's in this quilt. It's a lot of repeating um, types of quilt blocks. Not necessarily the whole block, but there's a lot of flying geese and a lot of house square triangles. But this is a great quilt for that because unfortunately, a lot of people are afraid of flying geese. They're afraid of house square triangles and making sure they don't lose their points. So if you can master that, the rest of it is easy. And that's not to say that any, I don't even consider myself an expert. I've just been doing it a long time. Um, I still make mistakes, but this is a great quilt to really get good at it. Not mistakes, but everything else. All right, so we're just gonna sew these two together. Sew these to here, sew these two together and put them on and then sew our little Pounds together. Almost there. Okay. 
On my machine, if I chain piece, it saves me a lot of aggravation. Or at least do leaders and enders because my machine likes to um, suck fabric into the needle plate when I'm first starting. I have found that it is common in some bright baby locks and brother machines. So chain piecing helps alleviate some of that process and problem. Not to mention it saves you just a tiny split second of time. So lay these back down. Uh, so what do you guys do in this 4th of July week coming up or weekend? I'll be working. Daughter, youngest daughter will be going to visit her sister and my grandbaby in North Carolina. And I'll be here. But I get my vacation in a few weeks. So now all we've got to do is so this one to this one, this set to this flying geese, this one to this flying geese, and we can set our rows together. Almost done. It came undone. Let's try it again. Think. I'm trying to decide what I'm, the, the vacation I'm going on is basically just a little get together with some friends and I'm just going to sit and sew what I want to do. I'm not teaching, I'm just sewing what I want. And I'm trying to narrow down what I want to sew. Um, I haven't decided yet, so I think I'm going to do a Judy Niemeyer quilt. But I'm bringing some extra stuff just in case because who knows, I may change my mind when I'm there. You never know. But I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Fun, fun, fun. It's somewhat local, meaning it's drivable. It's a few states over, but it's not really bad. And, um, I think it's wonderful. Can't wait. All right. Here are our rows. Now we're going to just sew them together. There is going to be um, one matching seam each row. Thank you. 
Here we go. I'm going to show you the next one, how to make sure you don't cut off your point, like I did, because I wasn't paying attention. But this is a great teaching option. Okay. Not too bad, but close. I'm going to draw on this with friction pen so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. See the X? Well, that's where we've stitched this half of the flying geese and this half of the flying geese. That X is where your point is, right there. When you sew with the flying geese on top, make sure you stitch just on that side when it comes to your seam allowance of the cross of the X. You don't wanna stitch down on this side because then you will cut your point off. You wanna make sure you're just on that side. And it can be just a um, thread, thread width. Even if, and I know this is not, what you would call the quilt, quilt police way. But if you, let's say you start off with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And if you continued with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, you would cross over that X. It's okay. I know it's not perfect, but there is no such thing as perfect. It's okay to start with a quarter of an inch and go over a, thread length or a thread width or two so that you do not cross that that line and then come back to your quarter of an inch okay it's not it'll look great on the front you won't be able to see that little thread length thread width um difference and you will not cut your point off this is not there are no quilt police Okay, plain and simple. I know there are some out there, but it should be fun. And the less aggravation you have with flying geese and the points, the more fun it is and the eat better it is. You should have fun with this. So please have fun. Don't sweat the small stuff. Nobody's going to see it. I uh, want to tell my ladies if they do point out your mistakes. Unless it's your teacher, they are not your friend. Sorry. Okay. We've got our final row with our final single seam align, aligning. Blech. Sometimes I get a little twist tongue tied. Okay, there we go. So again, I'm gonna sew with this one on top so I can see my seam. I'm gonna sew down and make sure that I'm on this side of the seam allowance. I don't want to cross over my point because you will lose your point on the front. And don't ever, ever, ever sew over your pins. Too many chances of something bad happening, so it's not worth it. 
All right. Here we go. There are my seams. Woohoo. And I didn't cut anything off. So there's block 44 and block 43. All right. Now I've got a ton of fabric to put away. I mean, a ton. So it's stitch and bitch day. You know what that means? It's a free sit and sew. Come on in, have some fun, pet some nice new fabric. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them here and I will answer them as quickly as possible. Now, I hope you guys have a very happy, safe uh, 4th of July weekend weekend and enjoy yourself. Bye.